how to reignite a man's interest that seems to have fizzled. I emphasize the word seems here because to 29-year-old Daniela, it feels very clear to her that Dan pursued her in the beginning. But what we get to in this conversation is that it wasn't real pursuit. Dan is a nice guy and he likes Daniela for what she gave him in the beginning, but it wasn't real pursuit. And because it wasn't real pursuit, that means that his interest in continuing is very low. This is a very important episode for you to listen to. If you have begun a situationship, friends with benefits, or in any way started something with sex right at the outset, Daniela explains that she met Dan in a club and went home with him that night. He was great though. They actually had a proper date after their night at the club, but it wasn't enough and it wasn't really real pursuit in the way a man needs. So listen closely and you will do yourself an enormous favor because you will hold back in the beginning to allow for real pursuit to happen with a man. I love that Daniela gets it in the way that she does. She's super smart. She's going for her dreams in other areas of her life and I believe she can get her dream relationship that she so deserves and perhaps even with Dan. When she changes things up with her actions, he'll be back for sure. We also go into what she does on social media and in texting that you don't want to miss. So let's not waste a moment. Let's get right to the episode. I'm so thankful for your advice. I love how intelligent and eloquent you are and still have love and given me some great guidance and direction. And now it's up to me to execute it. I feel a lot better just working through it. I thank you so, so much. I feel like you already are instilling more confidence in me that this is possible. Sick of sacrificing or settling in your romantic life? Welcome to Make Him Wonder with Coach Paula Grooms where women struggling in real relationships ask the expert. Unscripted, unfiltered, understandable coaching conversations to help passionate women succeed in love. Hi there, and welcome to Make Him Wonder. I'm your host, Coach Paula, a dating and relationship coach for women, licensed social worker, and author of the book, Why Won't He Commit? How a Man Decides to Make You the One. I coach you to find a potential Mr. Right, get an ex back, or grow an existing relationship with a man you truly desire, and learn how to inspire his continued interest for the relationship of your dreams, so that you level up to the complete commitment you totally deserve. My guest today is 29-year-old Daniela. Daniela met Dan at a club back a few months ago, and she slept with him that night. The following day, Dan treated Daniela to a day of top golf, cigar bar, and a lovely dinner. Afterward, they watched Netflix on the couch with no sex, and then later that week, they did a movie night together. Nothing has been discussed about what the other is looking for, and Daniela is concerned as she knows Dan has this entire month off and now almost two weeks into the month, he hasn't reached out. Daniela wants my opinion on her situation and whether or not I believe she should be dating others. Welcome, Daniela. Hi, thank you for having me. Absolutely. This is a, a good situation here to discuss. Tell us, it's about three months ago that you met now. Tell us where things are at the moment. At the moment, we haven't talked for a month. I don't like to reach out to him often. I let him reach out to me. He, does, he hasn't reached out to me at all. I feel like I'm always reaching out, doing little things. So I was like, I'm not going to reach out anymore. He invited, when he was here after our date, he was like, I'm sad that I have to go. He travels for work for about eight weeks. He travels and then he's off for four weeks. From We're from the same town, but he travels for eight weeks away at a time. And so we had a few texts here and there and he had he had offered to pay for a flight to for me to visit him while he was away working on a weekend. And I was really grateful for that. And I said, We'll we'll figure out a time. And then we haven't really planned it. We've kind of thrown out some weekends, like it was Memorial Day in May, but that didn't work out for me. And then the second time, it was in June, he said, when are you going to come visit? 
And I said, no, I said, I would really, I'm really excited to, tempted to visit, but I have a test in July, the end of this month. So I said, you know what, let's just postpone it. And I will really come in August or end of July because I'll have more freedom. So we really haven't talked a lot. And I, I do like him. We get along really well. We have some chemistry that's really good. So I just kind of wanted to know what you thought, if I should, I don't know. I just, I'm just kind of confused. <laughs> I know it's too soon. Kind of maybe. You say that you met at a a club and you went home with him that night. The following day, you went on a real date, so to speak, and then you went home. And I'm interested in hearing about that date and how he was on that date and why it was that you actually went home together again that night. And so tell me about that. Oh, the date was really great. I mean, he was, I mean, he listened to me and let me talk. And I always felt very respected. He opened the car door for me and paid for everything. Just made me feel really comfortable. And I had read the why he won't commit after this. And I read the rules after this. So I realized that I, the date was too long. Like he picked me up at four o'clock PM and went, the date went on until the next morning, obviously, because we woke, we fell asleep on the couch watching Netflix. But he seems like interested in me, not purely for sex. So I feel that we could get to know each other more, but I wish he would reach out to me. But I also did tell him I had this big test. So I don't know if he's not reaching out because he told me when we were on the date, he's like, we had talked about serious things like kids, like families and and all this stuff. And I told him about the test and he said, I don't want to disrupt you. And I appreciate that because a man shouldn't disrupt a woman in her element. So right after that second night together, what happened? After that, he did text me and he initiated it. And then I would text him sometimes first. And later that week, he said, what do you want to do like for a second hangout date? And I had given him some suggestions, but I had been really tired, actually. So that Thursday, like the week after, I was like, I don't even want to go out. I was like, do you just want to come over and watch a movie? And he's like, you read my mind. And he came over and we just watched a movie. And did you have sex that and night? We did have sex that night. Mm-hmm. And then what happened? Then he woke up the next day and left. And he brought me, he went to go get coffee and he said, do you want a coffee? And I said, sure. He brought me back coffee and I was like, oh, you're the best. And he knew that I had to study. So I got my day on studying and I haven't really seen him since. And I was like, I don't know when I'm going to see him again. Like now I'm thinking like that may be the last time I see him. I hope not because obviously I want to see him again, but that's life. (laughs) Okay. So you say you're confused and I want to help you with that. You say that you read my book and you actually read the rules after this whole thing uh, with him began. What are you thinking now? I mean, now I'm definitely letting him do the chase because I feel I've always been the one that's putting effort. And I've now I said I've been wanting someone to put effort in me, not me always doing the effort. And I've always gone to visit men and different places and it doesn't work. So that's kind of why I said, no, maybe he should come back to our hometown and reach out to me. So I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm holding back. Okay. So far he hasn't reached out. Right. He has off, you said this whole month and he's been back in your town and he has not reached out. I'm not sure if he's back yet. I mean, he could be back. He could still be away. But you know that sometime this month he's going to be home and he's certainly not, if he's not back yet, he's not planning anything or he'll just, when he gets there, and we don't even know if he's not there already, but if and when he does, he may or may not. Mm -hmm. Right. So what are you, you said you're confused. What is confusing about his behavior? I mean, I guess it's, if he's not reaching out, he's not reaching out. So that's my answer. Yeah. Yeah. It's an unfortunate thing. Should I date other people? What in that, what even prompts that question? I'm not sure. So I'm, I'm dismayed that you would even be asking that question. Do you know why I would feel that way? Or what do you think prompts me to be dismayed that you would even ask the question? Mm, I'm not sure. Maybe because I should probably date others. I'll tell you I'm dismayed because 
you are a lovely 29-year-old woman and you even thinking about taking yourself off of the dating market given this situation is sad to me. And I want to tell you more about that. And how I will do that is by going through everything from the time you met until now. And I think that is going to help you. It's going to help you round out the book and the rules and all that you've just come to, okay? Okay. Great. And I'll do that in a moment. I trust you're enjoying Make Him Wonder and that you're getting a lot of helpful information for the life of love you desire and deserve. So if you're not part of the 80-20 Wonder Club yet, you need to be, because now Make Him Wonder is exclusive, a members-only club to listen to every episode, past, present, and future, in full, all ad-free. The 80-20 Wonder Club is a Make Him Wonder membership that gives you all of seasons one, two, and three in a categorized list by age and relationship status, and a multimedia library of my content, including my book, relationship evals, and my Mechanics of Men Mindset Manual, a weekly action step you can focus on to attract and keep the man of your dreams and have him committing to you completely in the coming months. Make this the moment you start living as an 80-20 Wonder Woman, because love, like life, is best lived in 80-20. When you do 80% of what works with men, the 20% you don't won't much matter. Join the 80-20 Wonder Club by going to the 8020wonder.club. Don't miss out. Go now to the 8020wonder.club. You and your man will be glad you did. So we're back with 29-year-old Daniela, who has been wondering and is confused about a man she met a few months ago and who is really showing little to no effort of late, although he did make a stab at an attempt to see her because of the unique situation here. Dan, I understand Daniela, works most of the time away from your city and then he comes home for a month at a time yeah correct so i had stated before the break that we were going to go through this kind of step by step and it would help you to understand his mindset and where things went off course to have him be at a place where he is reaching out and i think it will clear up that confusion for you okay okay great so you met Dan at a club. What kind of club was it? Dancing? Yes, dancing. Okay. Were you there with friends? Um, how was it that the two of you actually met? I was there with friends, and he was there with his friends, and he came up to me. I was staring off at the dance floor. He came up to me and grabbed my hand and asked me to dance. Okay. And take us through that night and how you ended up back at his place. So we danced and we had fun and I, he introduced me to his friends. He was so, so sweet and genuine and he considered it. He was trying to set up his friend with another girl and he even told me, he said, I'm going to speak with this girl for my friend so as to not offend me and be considerate in that way. And then I in also introduced him to my friends and my friends thought he was just really great and sweet and we danced some more and he bought me a drink and then I actually had lost my friends and I said oh well I and he goes you can come with me and I ended up going to his place okay and you get to his place what time is it it's probably like two in the morning and how did sex occur what happened first he was so sweet he gave me like pajamas and everything and he initiated it so after like some chatting he showed me some books that he was reading he showed me some pictures he like gave me a tour of his room kind of charming and then showed me the bathroom if I need to use the bathroom and then then we we're just settling down getting ready for bed and he initiated the sex and did you say no at first what what happened no I didn't say no I kind of let things happen the way they did uh-huh and then what happened the next morning the next morning, I wake up and I had plans at 10 a.m. So I woke up fairly early and he woke up too. He brought me some food in bed and some juice. And then um, he said that he would, this was actually all at his family's house. So it was like 
kind of, I could hear voices outside and I had like, I had to kind of rush out. I felt like Cinderella rush out and I was like, I oh, should go. And he said, well, we'll have to hang out. And then he asked me for my number and he said, we'll have to hang out again. And he had told me his plans for the day. He was going to have lunch. And I said, I was going to do brunch and then maybe we can hang out after. Oh, that night he had said to go to go golfing because he enjoyed golfing. And I said, I enjoy golfing. So then when we started texting in the afternoon, he said, let's go to Top Golf." And so you went and then afterwards you went to a cigar bar and then you had a nice dinner. And then how was it that you went home with him again? And then when after dinner, we were driving back and I probably should have said, I have, I have to wake up early. I should have told him to go. I don't know. I just let him in and we ended up laying on the couch watching Netflix and we fell asleep. Then we woke up the next morning and he said something like around the lines of, oh, the walk of shame. Like he did, like I did the walk of shame once and he did the walk of shame after, even though we didn't have sex that night. Okay. And then you said later that week, you actually went out like. He started texting you. You didn't have to reach out. He was texting you. Yeah, he would say good morning, and then he'd say how's your day, how's studying, and I would talk to him back. And he said, or what would you want to do later this week if we get together? And I said maybe I, I I gave him some suggestions that night. Then it was a Thursday night. I said I could take a study break around Thursday. We were planning. This was like a Monday. Thursday, he had responded to me. Said good morning. And um, later that day, I responded and I said, hey, it's been a good day. Like, And I said, I don't know if I want to go out, maybe, because I was feeling under the weather. Like, I just wanted to stay in. So I um, said, I, right. yeah. So then I said, why don't you come over for a movie? And because I knew he was at his family's house, so I didn't want to invite myself to his family's house. But. And so that's where he lives. He lives with his family. And then when he's working, he's on the road, correct? Yeah. I think when he's, the company he works with provides him with like an apartment when he's gone. And does he go to the same place all the time or is it different places? Yeah, the contract right now is in the same place. I see. And it's indefinite as like it renews every month. And how old is he? He's 31. All right. So now we've got all that and it's now like three months later and you don't know if he's there or if he's not and he has not reached out. So I, I want to take you to a very basic and foundational place and understanding that will help you to know why it is that you're getting this kind of behavior and why you're in the confusion you're in. If you've heard me at all, you might have heard me talk about Freud's Madonna whore dichotomy. Oh, no. Okay. That's a foundational principle. It's in the male brain, and Freud just qualified it for us in words so that we would understand something very, very um, almost primitive but foundational in the male mind. And I talk about it in a much different way when I say, what you do with him, he thinks you do with all men. And this helps put it in a more modern kind of context. But what it is, is that when a man does not have to achieve you, he doesn't value you, and he believes that you didn't just do what you did with him because you really liked him. He believes you could, would, or are doing it with all men. And this is really maddening. And it's, mm. it's quite awful because it couldn't be farther from the truth for most all women. I mean, it's so not us. Right. I did on the date kind of make him feel special. Like I said, I told him that I, I don't do that, like just go home with people. But who knows to what level he believed it or not. And that's a really good point because what you say to a man means nothing nothing it's only what we do so i have a question what can if he does reach out to me in july like or end of july say because i have my exam towards the end of july or even in august what do i do can i go yeah. visit him if he offers to pay like he said i mean i don't i don't know this is a you're in a difficult position it can be done but you're going to have to do it until and you're going to have to truly reset things. I'm glad you get it as quickly yeah. as you do. 
And can I have sex with him? Does he initiate it? Like, how how far do I have to hold off? I know that in the book it's like three dates. No, is it three dates no sex? Yeah, I I don't I don't go by that. I actually have a much different framework uh, that I work with. Even though you know I call myself an eighty twenty rules coach because I think the mm-hmm. foundation of the rules is really wonderful and it helps provide a framework. But what happens is that women get very, very stuck on details of it that are individual, that can be different. For example, I use this example quite a bit to allow for women to understand that it's not exactly the when of the sex at all. So that's why Mm. this three date thing is, I believe, misleading. So it sounds like you are in a uh, college, you're doing something whereby you're, you're studying. So are you in a formal program? I graduated law school and I'm sitting for the bar. Ah, wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, congrats on that. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, that's really great. So for example, so say you are in school, say you're doing a bachelor's and you get to know people tangentially in school. There may be someone that has liked you from afar and you know he has and he's even asked you out but you were involved with someone else Mm -hmm. and along the way you you broke up and he kind of came into your orbit again and he discovered you broke up and he asked you out and you said you know that's really nice but I have to be honest I'm I'm still really just dealing with the breakup I'm not dating at the moment I'm just kind of concentrating on my own healing and and thanks but I I'm just not dating at the moment so again he goes off maybe it's a whole summer and then you come back and and eventually he's around your orbit again and he asks you out again and you said well you know I have had time to to heal and I'm okay I'll go out so you go out with him and maybe it's the first date maybe it's the second and you actually have an incredible time and you have sex with him Uh you see in that scenario whether or not you had sex on the first date or second He had all of that time wanting you and trying to achieve you before. You see? Yeah. So in that scenario, he could put you in the first category of Freud's uh, Madonna-Whore dichotomy. He could absolutely put you there and it could absolutely go the distance because he feels he finally attained you. Mm. In another scenario, it will not be that. Some men, you have to really do it hard and long. Others, Mm. you know, you do not depending. So I don't like that three-day rule because if you meet somebody online, say, and I call that the first meeting, when you're first in person, that's your first meeting. It's not a date until after he meets you and then he wants to ask you out and pursue you. Then that's a first date. Well, if you sleep with him that next time, he didn't have any time to really pursue. You see? Oh, yeah. Do you think maybe he had time while he's working, he's been working and I, he invited me to go up the next day spontaneously and I said, no, let's wait because I have 45 days before the test and I don't want to cloud my, like, I want to stay focused. Do you think he's thinking that that makes that time is more like for missing or desiring whatever guys Okay, I want to go back to, you have to understand the importance of the beginning. Mm -hmm. That what you do with him, he thinks you do with all men, no matter what you say. Here's what could have changed it. And I'm not saying you can't change it, but it's going to take quite a bit of work on your part and time. Here's how it would have been different. You have fun at the club and you say that your friends left you and you didn't have any transportation. Mm -hmm. A couple of things. And one is an A an A rating and one's a B rating. I'm going to give you the A rating, okay? That really puts you in that first category in a big way. 
Mm-hmm. So you have this incredible time. It's closing time at the club or what have you. And you realize, oh my gosh, my friend's left. And he says, oh, I'll mm-hmm. give you a ride home. You say, oh, that's really sweet. Thank you. But I'm more comfortable calling an Uber. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you why it does it. You just showed him, I don't know you. Likely you've both been drinking. And I don't go home with anybody I've just met. I don't even trust and get in a car with somebody I just met. Right. You see how A that is? The guy really puts you, wow, this girl is up yeah. there. That's someone they want to attain, not just for sex, but actual, like more. Right. That's somebody who is worthy of respect, value, wife and mother material, a worthy opponent. Okay. Right. The B fix yep. is, oh, um, well, I know you've only had, it seems to be one drink. You've been su- super respectful tonight. Okay. If you could give me a ride home, that would be wonderful. Quite frankly, and I know it sounds like out of the realm because we have an inner knowing about people. And it sounds like, well, you know, I could tell I could trust him. He said something to me like, I didn't expect to meet you. I said, I didn't expect this to happen. And he said, I haven't brought someone home in a long time, but I don't know. I don't want you to think about anything that was said. Mm -hmm. None of it matters. Matters. Yeah. None of it. This is awful for us as women that all he knows is that you are a girl who does that. Mm -hmm. Now, doesn't mean he doesn't absolutely love that you did, love who you are. You know, you're a pretty puppy that's obviously you're studying for the bar. You're smart. You're achieved. You're all of it. Doesn't mean that he doesn't love that. He will. Mm -hmm. But when we want to win with men, we have to, you know, know the enemy, so to speak. And I hate that it's not enemy, but we have (laughs) to know. That's why I use worthy opponent. It's we have to know who we're playing. Right. That's it. And so what he sees is that when he's not there... He believes you're doing that no matter what you said. And that's what's awful because we as women know uh, you could meet a hundred guys and it's only going to be nary a few that you're going to be that attracted to and will actually be having sex with. Yeah. Yeah. We know that they do not, no matter what, believe it unless we show it Mm -hmm. and show it to them that that's what we do with them, that we put every man through the obstacle course and the test. Every man. The only way he's assured of it. And this is biological because heretofore in the history of man, the man could never ever know if that offspring that came from a woman was his without one thing. And ultimately that thing was simply trusting in the woman. And the only way a man can trust is the behavior he sees with not just him or not just other men, both. So what you do with him, he thinks you do with all men. So when you said you would come to see him, it also sends the wrong message, unfortunately. The only message that the man understands in terms of wanting more, and we don't know if he's in the state of being a buyer or not, I would say probably not, and I'll tell you why. He is living with his parents and having this job, even if the job is good, he's either going to have someone where he is, where he goes every eight weeks, or probably not at home because he doesn't have anywhere to bring them back. Oh, yeah. So probably not. So he liked everything that happened with you and he was there and on his month break. So he was taking advantage of, yeah, you know, why wouldn't he see you um, Mm -hmm. while he was there? Right. And I'm not saying he's not a good guy. He is. I mean, from all you've told me, he's respectful. He's good. He's whatever. So you will need to do a lot to reset this. And you can, but you're going to be going against previous behavior. So you really right. have to do it in a very specific way that will render, yeah. And I'll tell you about that in a moment. 
quick one, you might be surprised to know that there are over 150 real life love and relationship coaching conversations just like this one ready for you to hear right now. And you can have access to all of those. Yes, the 8020 Wonder Club is yours. Take advantage of this wonderful offer for you to level up. Whether you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, you're in a divorce situation, you have a situation ship, or you want an ex back, there are 150 plus episodes there and more to come categorized by age and relationship status all ad free in their entirety so that you can learn level up and take a leap forward in your relationship i will see you in the club now back to the episode so we're back with daniela talking about what she can do from here to possibly reset and then restart things with Dan. And as I was saying, Danielle, it is possible, but you are going to have to do it if you get the shot to do it. And oh, okay. hopefully you will, because you've not shown him any pushback to him reaching out. So I think that you will. I think when he is there and when he has the time, he will, unless a couple of things. The first is that there's someone else. If there is okay. someone else, because he sounds like a decent guy, if there is someone else, he will not reach out to you. Oh. Mm -hmm. In other words, if there's someone where he is for the eight weeks, which uh, likely that would be because that's where he's spending most of his time. Right. So if that's the case and he's met someone or he's met someone new, he's not even with her yet, but he's met someone new that he wants to pursue. And if he's a good guy and he's a, like a one woman guy, he will not. But we never know where that's going to go. And then he will kind of think through and say, oh, yeah, you know, Daniela. And he may reach out to you again. The other reason he may not reach out is that he got the sense either from your continuing going back and forth with him and or if you were reaching out at all, that you are more into having a relationship now than he is. Oh. Which do you think it might be? I, I was thinking both. I was thinking it could be both. I mean, I've thought both of those scenarios out potentially, but I just, I don't know. Okay, fair enough, right? You don't know. On his social media, I've noticed that there's no other women, and I've kind of interacted on social media a little bit, but there's no other women posting on his photos. He doesn't post one other girls. And that night that I met him, he told me he was single, and he asked me if I was single. But, you know, we don't really know anything. So how is it that you got on his social media? When did that happen and how did that happen? The night of that I met him, he added me, and I added him back. Okay, and so is that on something like Instagram? Yeah, Instagram. And I, I, so I do see when he posts some stuff, but I try not to look at it. And this sounds really kind of like stalkerish, but my friends have another Instagram, and so she added him. He never met her. He doesn't know who she is, and he probably. And so we kind of like watch him through that Instagram. So I'm not giving him my energy, knowing like, because one day I did look at his stories, and the night I met him, I was wearing a white shirt and jeans. He posted white shirt and jeans, and he said something about white and jeans, and I was like, that's ironic that he posted that and that was like sometime this summer then recently i haven't looked at his stuff at all like my instagram personally i look through this second instagram my friend's instagram and then now recently i was like oh i'll just look to make him like like a breadcrumb like oh daniela's thinking of me and that you don't and want you, you don't want to do no no oh no. okay yeah so it's it's fine that you have this other account Mm -hmm. but you want him to be wondering. It shows that you. you're okay with how he's treating you. You're right, yeah. And, and he's pretty much ghosted you. Um, yeah. So you have to show nothing. And then you have to be really ready when he reaches out. He has not reached out to you in a couple of weeks. Yeah. And when did you last put a like or look at his story or whenever? Fourth of July. Fourth of July that I looked and he posted something like, what are you looking at? And I knew that was directed to me. Like it had to be directed to me. But he didn't actually say it to you. No, he just generally posts indirectly yeah. kind of posted yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's kind of cocky. You see, it is passive aggressive. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. If you have really overt interest in me as a man, meaning sexually, 
I'll take it, but I'm not going to do yeah. anything towards it, okay? Oh, I see, yeah. Mm-hmm. So okay. it's fairly simple. Here's the fix for you. Mm-hmm. For the next month, meaning until, because 4th of July was when you last looked at him, okay? And he yeah. knew it. Okay. Mm-hmm. I want you to, because you had mentioned uh, that you are very into your studies and you have a big test yeah. coming up. That's kind of a life-changing test. This is a biggie. Yeah. It, it could is. potentially, right? Or it kind of mm-hmm. kickstarts, you know, your whole life ahead of you, whether or yeah. not, you know, you get a good score or you, you know, whatever. So it's huge. So you it want is. to be focused there. And here's what you can do with this kind of strategy is that what I know from the work that I do and who I work with, this kind of thing works like a charm. It really does. It changes uh-huh. the dynamic. <laughs> And, what is it that I have to do? Uh, I, will, I will tell you that. <laughs> but the other thing is that you can then focus on yourself better and easier by knowing that you're invoking a strategy. Yes. Mm-hmm. And that is of infinite value. Because let me tell you, if this strategy doesn't work, you don't have much of a hope in hell anyway. And nothing else exactly. is going to work. Okay? Right. But the the other side of doing the strategy is that it allows you to just say, I'm doing this strategy, this is what I can do, and then I can focus myself elsewhere on me until such time as it comes the right time in the strategy to do more. Okay? Right. Mm-hmm. And here's what it is. So you want to... Wondering what the strategy is that I outlined for Daniela that will have the best chance of re-sparking things with Dan, allowing for Daniela to be pursued in the way she deserves. In the rest of this episode, I give Daniela the exact steps with their time frames, including the action she must take on social media. And because I want you to get the results you desire with your current or ex Mr. Wright, I invite you to check out the 8020 Wonder Club, an exclusive membership only club of the Make Him Wonder podcast where you'll get nearly 200 ad-free episodes in their entirety, categorized by age and relationship status, plus all new episodes the moment they're formatted and ready to be aired. Complete, unfiltered coaching conversations like this one, with all my advice and principles to have you succeeding in your love life. But there is much more. The 8020 Wonder Club includes my Making Magic with Men Mindset Manual, a series of of mindset and mechanics practices for you to do at your own pace each and every week. It alone is valued at over $500 and is all yours as a member. Join monthly and cancel at any time or save by committing to a six or 12 month membership. And not only will you save by committing to more, you'll receive a full coaching intensive experience where you'll be talking to me in a conversation like you just heard. You choose the date anytime during your 12 months and I'll be answering all your questions on getting what you desire and deserve. Check it out at T-H-E 8020 dot C-L-U-B and join us as that is the only way you'll be able to hear what Daniela must do to have the shot she desires and deserves with Dan. Don't miss out on how to make your man wonder in the right way to have the divine right results you deserve in your love life. Go now to the 8020wonder.club. That's the 8020wonder.club. You and your love will be glad you did.